What's up guys? Today we are back with our MSC Davina recap video. I'm joined here by Mama Hoka, Mural's favorite person ever. <laughs> uh, and today we're going to be breaking down the good, the meh, and the bad. What we liked about the cruise, what we did not like. We're going to give you guys all the details so that when you sail on the Davina, you can have the best experience possible. So, uh, Mama, should we start with the good or the bad? Let's start with the good. Let's start yeah. with the good. We'll, we'll work. We'll work down our way. All right. So the first thing, the first good thing that we thought was excellent about the ship was the design, the decor. Oh my gosh, it was just so beautiful, just so elegant. Those Swarovski staircase. Come on. <laughs> yes, it, it is a really, it is a truly gorgeous ship. Um, always surprised me. I think there were several times like all the mirrors that they used. Oh, I would like run straight the into the mirrors <laughs> and like it would scare me because I would scare I would you. Like, be vlogging and looking at the camera and I would like look into my peripheral and see like myself and I was like, oh my goodness, you know, like somebody standing right in front of me. It, it really, they they did a great job designing that ship. Every single deck was just gorgeous. Every lounge, um, the what was it? What was that orange one called? Oh, I don't remember. But I like still remember that thing. Like every detail about it. Like it had like a chandelier. You remember the glass balls? Oh, yes. The the so decor. Pretty. It on just the ship. made it seem so much bigger. You yeah, know, with all yeah. that. And not only the mirrors, but, you know, the different levels, you know, going down in, into the Piazza del Doge that's and all that. That's true. That's yeah. true as well. It actually had, like, declines and inclines in the ship, whereas most ships, you know, the deck is just like a flat, you know, from the front of the ship to the back is the same kind of... But to you know, get down to the shopping closet, level. you had to go down. Yeah, but you actually had like a ramp down into the shopping closet and then would come back up. It was um, really nice. It was, it was. The decor was it probably felt more the like best a thing resort about the ship. Yeah. Than, than it did a ship. Yeah, I mean, that was, it was that nice. Was nice. Um, number two, number two, one of the, uh, the good things that we thought about the ship. The food. The food, actually, guys. Okay, so that turned into the food cruise. MSC has, yeah, he did. MSC has gotten like a really mixed rap with the food. Now, this this is our personal opinion. Um, the food was fantastic. Every meal that we had was hot. Um, every we did every meal so that we had was amazing. Great flavor. Um, now well, I we mean, did it's find a different out. flavor because it's European. You know, yeah. so I mean, they, they use a lot of different, you know, like olive oil and different herbs and spices that you don't traditionally, even though we're sailing out of Miami, it was not a traditional American based, you know, menu. Yeah. So to us, it was really a cultural, you know, I don't know, smorgasbord. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was the only time that we ever had like any sort of cold food. And it wasn't even cold, but it was cool. And that was the very first day. And that was because we got our food before we get our drinks. So, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. But um, it does take a little bit to get your drink. Like if you want like a soda or a, a mixed drink or something. So get that first before you get your food. Or maybe have one person in your party go get the drinks and then you get the food. You know, just yeah. don't get your food, set it down, and then go get your drink. Because then that food is cooling down, right? And maybe that's where you're experiencing that cold uh, that cold food situation. So, but the food, everything that we had was always favorite. Well, San, sans that turkey thing at the dinner. Remember the turkey and the rhubarb, which everybody yeah, on our table, everybody, everybody at our it. table hated. But I mean, that, that, so. that was just. I mean, that was like one thing. But I mean, everything else. Everything the, else was <laughs> amazing on that. Yeah. Show. Every. I mean, every, you see the videos. The, we were eating at seven thirty, then we were eating it again at nine, and then we're eating at eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so the food was definitely a good part of our cruise. Definitely a highlight. Um, then we have the itinerary. Mm -hmm. um, the itinerary was just a great... I mean, it had St. Martin in it. So you guys already know I'm like going to be biased about the itinerary. <laughs> it's my favorite island. But um, San Juan, I, we hadn't been back to San Juan in what? Four years? Five years? Something like that. Something like that. So it was great to be back in San Juan. Even Nassau. We had a great time at Balmore Island we in did. Nassau. That was a uh, And that was amazing. Easter Sunday, too. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. It was a fantastic time. And then, of course, like I said, St. Martin. You guys already know we had a great time there. And then the last one, Mama, for good... What was the last thing that we thought was good about the ship? The photography. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. Maybe I'll throw a photo or two. I was trying to say, throw a couple of the right professionals up there because um, they were just crazy good. They did such a, like, the detail that was in, like, you could see, like, 
I don't, I don't know, like, just the detail in the face, in the lips, in everything. Just And they did it not just in color, they did them in sepia, You could see, black like, each white. individual hair follicle. Like, yeah. you could see the individual hair. Yeah, uh, and they really took their time on those photos. Great photography on MSC. And the package. The package. For us pre-purchasing that package. Yeah. I mean, I, I would advise that to anybody. If you're going to do that, go on MSC and pre-purchase that photography package because you get 100 photos for $98. And that's not just 8 by 10s We ended up with, I don't know what those are. I don't know what are. size they are, but they're They're huge. like 11 by 15. Yeah, no, they're, they're really... they're glossy. I mean, they're, they're like, you, you would pay hundreds of dollars here in the States for the package that we got. Right, no. Um, and, and on board, if you don't purchase that package, on board each photo is what, like... 20 some dollars. Yeah, it, it is a ridiculous price per photo. Per photo, and like we those giant photos, like twenty something dollars, we were able to get a hundred of them. We got eighty five total. Is what we ended up yeah. purchasing. But a, a, a fantastic deal. Um, so if that is probably the biggest tip I can give you is if you are if you take a lot of photos on the cruise uh, or get them done rather, go ahead and pre-purchase that package because it's really going to save you some money in the I long run. I would pre-purchase even if you don't do it because you don't know until you get there if you're going to be doing formal night. Um, and dressing up and stuff, which there's usually two formal nights. So you have, you know, a variety of, you know, backgrounds and, you know, outfits. Mm -hmm. So I would advise going ahead and pre-purchasing that anyways, because even if you purchase 10 to 15 photos and you don't purchase 100, you're still saving money. <laughs> right, right. No, you're, you're, uh, the photo package is definitely, it, it's worth getting it on the ship. Um, or before, you, before you board the ship because once you get on the ship it's just going to be too expensive so yeah. um, that was the good things that we had about the ship now we're going to get into the meh things so the things that were mm, you know we didn't really care that much for them however it wasn't like a, oh man I wish they would change this you know um, so the first one being the overall entertainment entertainment um, the overall entertainment so some of the shows were good. Michael Jackson's awesome. Yes, some of the shows were not. And, and <laughs> unfortunately, I I personally think they should have put like either the pirate or the Michael Jackson at the beginning because the very first show I don't even remember it. I just it was yeah. Mask. It just didn't care for it. It, it no. seemed very outdated to me. Um yeah, I just one I would thing wish I will say they did do good though with their shows though and and I commented this to you when we watched them on the conquest is they do acrobatics mm -hmm. in their shows and I mean like they do a live acrobatics that carnival and I don't know if other cruise lines do but I mean they did that part better in my opinion yeah no they did yeah so the acrobatics that they do which is a European type thing too you know but they did that a lot better the overall showmanship while the shows are good, yeah, they do have room for improvement. Yeah, no, it, it seemed a little outdated to me. Like, like they could, um... Well, I told you, I felt like they were five years behind. Right, right. Like, it, it could they use a good. Business, you they know? were good. Yeah, no, it was a good show. It could just use, you know, use a little, a little more. bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, so, the entertainment was one of the first meh things. Uh, second meh thing that we have is the C-Day scheduling. So, like... They, for some reason, they, and I think I mentioned this in the blog, you in did. the blogs, but a lot of the stuff would be happening at the same time. So they would have several very like, like top list events all taking place at the same time. In various areas of the ship. Yeah, so you couldn't be at. So you kind of had to pick, you know, like, oh, I, I want to see this and this, but I'm going to have to choose one because, you And know. then there was a block of time where there was, like, nothing. Right, right. It would, like, everything would happen here, and then, like, after that would be, like, you know... Nothing. Art gallery stuff and, you know, tea time with Fred, you know, whatever. It, <laughs> it's like... I wish they would have spread that out a little more and not had everything happen at 1 or 1.30. And again, that's our personal yeah. take. I mean, something that you know we might not have thought was important might be important to somebody else. But to us, what we seen, you know, the things that we wanted to do, it seemed like they were all happening on top of each other. At the same time. Yeah. So, again, that's a man thing, you know. It would be great if they would spread that out. It wasn't like a big, like, oh my goodness, I can't stand this cruise line thing, you know. And our final man thing is going to be... The pool hours. The pool hours. <laughs> um, 
It was, it was really weird. weird. Yeah, right. It was really we weird. We never got to go in the pool, which was really a bummer. Which typically, we do, I'll do like the water park and stuff, which I didn't, didn't even get to do that. Yeah, I didn't even get a chance to do that. But um, the pool, like the adults only pool, at which the, is on the back, which is on the back of the ship. It's got the infinity thing and everything. Closed at eight o'clock. But then all the other pools closed at 10 o'clock. Like, I would think the adults only pool would be the one they would want to leave open the latest, you know? But I, but then everything, like even hot tubs, jacuzzi, everything closing at 10 o'clock, it's, you know, like sometimes, and they would have movies out on deck, so mo most people, or not most people, some people would want to go and, you know, sit in the hot tub and watch the movie, or, you know, kind of let the kids splash around in the pool while they watch the movie. They do that all the time on, on other cruise lines, but, you know, you weren't able to do that because the pool was closed at, at 8 and 10 o'clock. So I just wish that they would extend those hours, maybe, like, and that could be, like, a traditional European thing where, you know, they don't... Again, a cultural thing. I mean, this was, this was, you know, a different brand of ship. It was a different culture, as, as we've said, you know, and so it was, it's totally a different experience for us, you know, and learning that, and, you know, like I said, they don't always do everything the way all Americans do. Right, so. right. Then finally, we have the bad. So, things that we wish could be improved a little bit on the ship. Um... Things that just we kind of looked at it, we were like, okay, this is something that you know. And truth be known, I mean, really, we had to struggle. You know, when we was coming come up, up with this list, bad. this is stretching it. Like, take this with a grain of salt. This ship is a really, really, really good ship. And you know, and I would sail on this ship again. Exactly. You know, if you asked me to come tomorrow, I'd be on the ship tomorrow. Like, we've we've seen mixed reviews. I mean, I've seen people who hated this ship, and I, and after being on the ship, I'm like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. You so know, so the we, bad this was thing. Really the first bad thing that we, we came up with was um, bar service wait times. I told you guys a little bit ago we were going to talk about this a little more, but uh, it, it seemed like, for me, it took forever to get, like, a drink. And all I got was a simple soda, you know, or, or like, a, a mango smoothie or something. So nothing, nothing crazy extravagant that takes them, you know, three, four minutes to make. It was, you know, squeeze the button, let it fill up, and, and hand it to me. But it just seemed like it took forever. Ever. And that could just be because they had, typically they would have one guy standing at the bar serving everybody at the bar and then one runner that would come in and kind of take drinks out to people that are in the deck chairs and stuff. So one guy who's trying to help, you know, 19, 20 seats, that I guess that is a little much. So, uh, but the bar service wait times, like I remember, I remember waiting one, at one time for, it had to be over 10 minutes waiting for a drink. Uh, I think that was the first day why you, because you had went back and, and found our table and you was like, well, right. I mean, well, yeah. So yeah. But you also didn't realize you went all the yeah, way Yeah, there was a bar, but, but still, right. I mean, that's, you know, that, yeah, that's all bars, you know. Um, so that was the first kind of bad thing that we had. Second one, Mama, is the lack of the Fun Squad, what we call a Fun Squad presence. Now, they were there, okay? Mind you, they were there. To me, though, it just seemed like they weren't as enthusiastic mm -hmm. as what we're used to, except for the white party. Now, the white party, they brought their game. Yeah, no. The, the white were, party were, was like comparable on. to something you would find in Norwegian Carnival, Royal Caribbean, that kind of thing. But everything else, like the sail away party, uh, it was... <laughs> we just had to laugh and walk yeah, away. Yeah, it, mean, it, it was sad. It, well, first off, when it was it was advertised, I want to say at five five thirty or five forty five, and it was it was advertised at five thirty, and it was like five fifty. And they strolled up there just very nonchalantly. Just like, <laughs> kind of strolled up on the stage and was like, "All right, we're gonna start some line dances now." And it's like you know. I would expect they, to, uh, they for the sail away party. Maybe a I dozen would, people out there line dancing. I mean, yeah. it wasn't even a lot. For the sail away party, I would expect a little more, you know, wow, you know, welcome to MSC. You know, we're going to have a great week this week, you know. But the white party was in the middle of the cruise. I mean, yeah. that was, to me, it, 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 that energy needed to be at the beginning. Right. That's you what know? I'm saying. Like, you would want to start the cruise off with a wow so that then every time the entertainment staff is hosting an event, people are going to look at that and they're going to be like, I got to be there. I want to be with those people. They're fun. You know, yeah, that didn't happen for us. So, um, Fun Squad was definitely it, it can be, Lacking. yeah, it can be it can be worked on just a little bit. And then the last bad thing, uh, and to this us. is our preference. Um, this one is strictly our preference. You may have the same preference, but um, the fact that there was no flexible dining. 
Um, at least for our, I think there was flexible dining, just not available to us. I don't remember there being flexible. I want to say that upstairs was. Well, if that's Yacht Club. Yeah. I mean, it, Yacht Club, but I mean, that. you're paying for that. You're paying yeah. good money the, for that. <laughs> the flexible dining, like, what I mean by that is, you know, our dinner was at six. And while most time we eat at six, a lot of the sailaways were also at six. And, you know, I love, I personally love to watch the sailaway. I love watching us coming in to the island and sailing away from the island. It's just, it's, it's a personal favorite of mine. I really love watching it um, and, and just kind of, you know, saying goodbye to the island. And we were not able to do that. On two of the islands. On two out of the three islands because um, Sail Away was right in the middle of our dinner time. So I wish that it would have had flexible time flexible time for dining. That way I could have, you know, watched the Sail Away and we could have kind of, we didn't feel like we had to rush down to dinner is what I'm saying. The good, th the only good thing I will say about, and, and I've discussed this with you before we filmed, that I liked about our scheduled dining was what? we did get to meet our table we mates. did we got to meet usually some really when nice we do friends. you know flexible when we do your time dining on carnival you know usually it's a table for two yeah you know and so it's just me and him at dinner you know we're not really interacting with a lot of other people you know things like that that gave us you know we had a table you know table mates and everything and hey guys you know we miss you guys you know we really enjoyed being with you yes, guys and that was yes, a good experience so for us you know I liked that part of it I just I wish that we would have had the ability to be more flexible to come to the dining room so that we could have watched Sail Away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the, like she said, the plus side was we got to make some great new friends. Um, we got to have dinner every night with the same group of people. So yeah. they did become like friends to us. And by the end of the cruise, you know, we were hanging out and everything like that. So that is pretty much um, our, our take on MSC. Overall, we would definitely sail on the cruise line again. Yeah. But... Um, we also want to give you guys a quick review of the train, uh, the train ride. Because We've had so many people have talked to us. They're like, we can't believe you actually did that. I can't either. I can't either. <laughs> which, I mean, you know, a 21-hour train ride, you know, you think of it and you're like, oh my gosh. Which, yes, it was long. I do not understand why... Amtrak has us go and the reason it's 21 hours people is because Amtrak instead of going straight down to Miami you have to veer off and go to Tampa mm -hmm. and then come back over and then go down to Miami right. so that's an extra four and a half hours in your train ride that to me is not necessary I mean yeah. I, I would think they could have I to stop at Orlando have... and take a train over to Miami yeah right I think to, they can have service to Tampa. from Tampa to Orlando and, yeah or you know that like a different line or something the one coming from New York I think should come straight down the coast I don't know why it has to cut across Florida come back and then keep going down you know so what we've said in the future, would we do the train again? We would in the instance that if we sailed out of Port Canaveral, Port Canaveral. because for us to leave North Carolina, we would leave at nine o'clock at night and you arrive in Orlando the next morning at 10 a.m. So to do it'd that. It'd be like a hotel, you know, exactly. it'd be like a hotel stay overnight. Exactly. Our train is the hotel. So that would not be bad, but to Miami, oh, I wouldn't gosh. recommend yes. it to Miami again. Yeah, no, if you're going anywhere, Go out to Tampa, the, even. I mean, Tampa wouldn't be bad because we were in Tampa by 2 o'clock. Yeah, so Tampa wouldn't be that bad, but just... It, wa it wasn't really... It didn't feel long until after Tampa. Now, yeah. after Tampa, it was like, oh my goodness, let's <laughs> hurry up and get off this train, you know? And to come home, I mean, we came home, we, we left Miami at noon. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we arrived back in North Carolina the next morning at 8 o'clock. So, yeah. you know, we just had that whole day on the train. Yeah. And then we slept and woke up in, in North Carolina. Yeah. So, so that wasn't terrible. It wasn't as bad, but yeah. it was still long. Um, <laughs> so that is pretty much our review on the MSC Davina Cruise. If you guys would like us to go on that ship or that cruise line again, uh, the seaside looks absolutely amazing. Leave us a comment down below. Tell us what you think. I want to hear your reviews. Other than that, that is going to do it for this video, guys. Carnival Conquest Cruise Vlogs are still going on. And the Carnival Pride Breakdown video will be coming very, very soon. That cruise is coming up in... 30 some days. Under a month now, right? It, we're at 30 something. Yeah, 30 something days. That cruise is coming up, guys. So uh, leave us your comments down below. Um, we'll see you on, well, tomorrow for the uh, Carnival Conquest Day 2, Part 2. Bye, guys. Bye.